Welcome to this tutorial video. In today's tutorial video we'll be looking at some basic circuit analysis. First of all we'll look at circuit analysis of a series circuit and then later on we'll be looking at the circuit analysis of a parallel circuit. So you can see here we've got a series circuit and that can be identified by the fact that from the positive terminal from the battery current as it travels only has one continuous loop it goes through the two resistors and back to the negative terminal. Only one possible loop no branches, so this is a series circuit. So, in our first task, we're asked to work out the current at position 1, up the top here, the voltage across point A and B, also called the voltage across resistor 1, the voltage between point B and C, also known as the voltage across resistor 2, and also we want to try and work out what the value of resistor 2 is. We're given here that resistor 1 is 3 ohms. So, let's look at these 1, 2, 3, 4 calculations. So first of all, we know that to find the current I1, well, the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. So if we know the current at point A, B, C, or even down the bottom here, it's going to be the same everywhere along the circuit. So if there's 2 amps at the bottom here, we know that current 1 must also be 2 amps. Straightforward. And that holds true for all series circuits. Now let's have a look. We want to work out the voltage between point A and B the voltage across resistor 2. Well in this case we're going to use Ohm's law, V equals IR. And we're going to look at all the information we have about resistor 1. So first of all, the voltage between points A and B here and here is our question mark. So we're trying to solve. The resistance is given to us as 3 ohms and we know also from our earlier analysis that 2 amps is moving through the circuit at all points in the circuit. So the current going through between point 1, A and B, sorry, is going to be 2 amps. So using V equals IR, where I was 2 amps and R was 3 ohms, we can calculate simply that the voltage between points A and B, or indeed across resistor 1, is 6 volts. 2 times 3 is 6. Next we want to find out what's the voltage between point B and C, or the voltage running through the second resistor. Now this is straightforward. We know that we had 10 volts at the start. We just calculated that we use up 6 volts between point A and B. The only other resistance here is between point B and C, so what plus 6 gives me 10? It must of course be 4 volts. And that comes about from the fact that the sum of the individual voltage drops in a series circuit must equal that of the supply voltage, in this case 10 volts. 10 is equal to 6 plus voltage between B and C, which must be 4 volts. Finally we want to calculate the resistance, R2, between points B and C. So looking at all the values we have of R2, we know that R is our question mark, that's our unknown. The voltage between points B and C, that should be say BC, not AB, between B and C is 4 volts. And the current we know is 2 amps. So using R equals V over I, 4 volts divided by 2 amps, we end up with a resistance of 2 ohms. So, by simple analysis of a series circuit, understanding the current stays the same when the voltage breaks up, and by simple application of Ohm's law, we discover that the current, 1, is 2 amps, the voltage between point A and B is 6 volts, the voltage between point B and C is 4, because it has to add up to 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, and using Ohm's law, R2 came out to 2 ohms. Let's now have a look at the parallel circuit. We can tell this is a parallel circuit because current leaves the positive terminal of the battery, or the supply, and I guess this point here called a node, or a branch. Okay, and it can move to the left through R1, or it can move to the right through R2. Up until this point at year 10 of physics, we always consider resistors and globes to be equal in resistance. We can't make that assumption now. We don't know what R1 and R2 actually are. Well, we know R1 is 5 ohms, but we don't know the value for R2. So in this investigation, we're going to calculate I1, the voltage between point A and B, which is the voltage across R1, the voltage between point, not B and C, rather C and D, my mistake, which is across R2. Current in the first branch A, current in the second branch C, and the resistance of the unknown resistor R2. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one and that one. So first of all, even though this is parallel, we know that the current before the branch will be equal to the current after the branch. So this one at the top will also be 3 amps. The current splits up through the first branch and the second branch, but then reunites afterwards. So 
it makes logic sense. The current before the split or the branch will equal the current after the split or the branch, which is 3 amps. Let's now use our basic knowledge of parallel circuits. When there's no other resistance in the circuit, we know this 10 volt from the supply will be equal to the potential difference across each of the branches between A and B and C and D. So the voltage between points A and B will equal that of the supply, in this case, which is 10 volts. As you just said, in this branch as well, the voltage between points C and D will equal that of the supply voltage. It's also 10 volts. Now, we want to work out what's the current at point A. By the way, the current at point A will be the same as the current at point B. It's the current running through this branch or through this 5 ohm resistor. Let's use our Ohm's law, V equals IR. Let's consider only resistor 1, this information shaded in red. So current equals question mark. The resistance is given to us in 5 ohms. And we know the voltage between point A and point B is 10 volts. I equals V over R. Which, so the current in this case running through that first branch here will be 10 volts divided by 5 ohms, which gives me 2 amps. Now you guys are pretty smart. You should be able to see that if I've got 2 amps in this left-hand side branch, and it joins another branch to give me 3 amps, it doesn't take a lot of thinking to realize there must be 1 amp in this branch. So, let's have a look. We know again that there's 3 amps after the branch, before the branch. When it splits up, there was 2 on the left, which means we must have 1 in the right. So the 3 amps before or after the branch is equal to the current in the first branch plus the current in the second. The first branch we calculated have 2 amps. The current in the second branch therefore must be 1 amp. Let's now have a look at our resistance R2. So let's consider this bit that's all highlighted in red. R2, R is the unknown. The current we just worked out was 1 amp. And we know the voltage between points C and D is equal to that of the supply voltage. This branch has also got 10 volts. So using R equals V over I, we can work out the voltage of 10 for this branch. The current of 1 amp, 10 divided by 1, gives me 10 ohms for our resistance R2. So this circuit, as we just analysed, we worked out the current before the branch is after that equal after the branch. So it's 3 amps. Realise the voltage in this branch containing R1 is equal to the battery of 10. The voltage in the right hand side branch, R2, is equal to 10. We used Ohm's law of vehicles IR to work out there was 2 amps flowing through the left hand side branch. So we started with 3, we had 2 on the left which means we must have 1 on the right to add up to 3. And using Ohm's law in this right hand side branch with a current of 1 and a voltage of 10 volts, we know that the second resistor has a value of 10 ohms. Hope this has made some sense. Please feel free to review this again. Hopefully it brings together your knowledge of series and parallel circuits and how to apply Ohm's law correctly in each case. As always, thanks for watching.